네, 이제 2시가 됐으니까 이제 시작해도 될까요? 준비되셨나요? 네. 네, 그러면 이제 시작하겠습니다. Hi everyone, welcome to uh, uh, APCP's uh, string lecture series. Uh, it is a great pleasure for me to introduce uh, Professor uh, Eun Jung from Gyeonggi University. Uh, today and tomorrow, he will give us uh, three lectures on the cosine orbit in physics. Today, he will uh, teach you the higher spin algebra and the minimal orbit and uh, representations. Please join me in welcoming our speaker, Eun Jung. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, I'd like to thank first Zhangi to yeah to give me this nice opportunity. Uh, so I will talk about this co-adjoint orbit in physics. So co-adjoint orbit is uh, some uh, some mathematical concept in appearing in the Lie group theory of Lie group. Uh, actually, uh, when I was uh, 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 trying to um, fixed one title of my talk. I was just checking some books like a Lie group, <laughs> like a Lie group and algebra with application to physics. Another thing, group theory in physics, group theory in nutshell for physicists. So actually we, we all know that the, so the importance of group theory, uh, mostly, um, yeah, both finite and also uh, Lie group, and also the representation theory and many, many related concepts, many, many uh, mathematical tools developed within uh, group theory uh, are very, very important in physics. We all know that. But actually, which, uh, one thing which is relat relatively uh, less understood or less appreciated is the relevance of co in orbits of Lie group uh, in physics. So that uh, I will, so uh, in fact, I don't know yet even the kind of limitations or the scope of this quasi orbits in physics. So I cannot cover sort of many, many, too many, too, too many things. Just as I will cover something that I uh, know and then something that I'm uh, exploring now, investigating now. So this uh, quasi orbits are uh, important. So let me many 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 areas in physics so first i'm i'm i was doing i was uh, doing uh, research on higher spin gravity for some time already for some quite uh, several years so higher spin gravity somehow this is uh, important And then I recently learned that I'm learning and also studying its relevance in uh, particle dynamics. Dynamics, I mean, in the sense of word line particle. Yeah. And then it is also uh, related apparently uh, many uh, supersymmetry gauge theory, the vacuum structures of uh, so this is uh, the part that I'm I don't uh, I know the the list among the item that I present, but this is one of the topic that which is. Uh, uh, under um, active, uh, it's actively studied now in these times. And also well, not directly related to physics, but also uh, relevance in uh, representation theory. Yeah. So, and then probably many other things. Uh, which is, uh, so uh, today I will, uh, in these lectures, I will uh, mostly focus on these two, two things. First one, and then second one. So, and, and also I will do something about representation theory. So I will, uh, in these lectures, today's lecture, I will uh, 
discuss its relevance in higher spin gravity. And tomorrow I will uh, talk a bit more about this uh, uh, particle dynamics as well as a representation theory, which and the representation which are relevant in, uh, in physics. And this will be done uh, within what is called the uh, dual pair correspondence that I will introduce tomorrow. Okay, let me begin now the motivation from higher spin gravity. For that, uh, I need to introduce a little about the higher spin gravity. For that, we need to remind ourselves about the uh, um, uh, gauge symmetry. So by, by higher spin gravity, we mean that uh, uh, we is the theory which has uh, uh, um, higher spin uh, massive massive gauge higher spin fields. So for that we need to remind ourselves about the gauge symmetry of lower spin fields. Lower spin fields in the sense that something that we we are we know well. I mean the spin one field, we have a usual gauge symmetry. In the non-abelian case, we have some A dependence. <coughs> in the case of gravity, or if you like, in the case of <coughs> gravity in terms of metric fluctuations. That will be given by some sort of uh, yeah. Yeah. and then uh, some h. So here I just uh, intentionally I used uh, metric for fluctuations to somehow identify the really um, the the part which becomes vanishing when it goes to the vacuum. So this is the field fluctuations. Metric fluctuation. Around the, around the specific background. Say uh, G menu. And then, uh, so this is a uh, uh, covariant derivative. Uh, associated with the uh, menu associated with uh, GMT. <clears throat> so in this case, what you can, I mean, of course we can, you know, many stories related to this case symmetry, but among others, uh, we know the, uh, the killing equations, which we don't really consider in the case of spin one as it's trivial, but still nevertheless, we can consider here. So what is the uh, killing equations? Killing equation just uh, we put here background value, which, which means a equals zero and h equals zero. So this term drops, and then we impose that this part is zero. So this uh, just uh, tells us that okay, what is the the global part in a sense inside of uh, not inside, but uh, somehow the global symmetry, which is uh, which can be obtained from these expressions. So this is constant. And then in the case of uh, mm, gravity, so we need to solve this. And then for simplicity, uh, if we uh, take uh, Minkowski background for simplicity, uh, then actually we know that uh, Psi mu is nothing but this uh, p mu and then m mu mu x mu. And then this is translations. And then, so this is a global uh, gauge, uh, global internal symmetry. Like, and then this is uh, translations and then uh, uh, Lorentz transformations. So we, we know this. And then we can repeat the, the same thing in the uh, with the higher spin fields. Is it symmetry of uh, symmetry among so by higher spin fields actually 
uh, most of time we mean by this uh, uh, symmetric higher spin fields because uh, those are that those exist in L, uh, in all dimensions but uh, in higher dimension actually we can also consider some more complicated uh, um, tensors with a with a more complicated young symmetry so those uh, uh, is uh, has uh, this kind of uh, case transformation <clears throat> And, and then again, plus or part. So this part is relevant in the higher spin interactions. So this is, uh, should be compatible with the B, with the, or dictated or uh, given by higher spin interactions. While this part is, in a sense, <laughs> already <laughs> fixed in terms of uh, um, higher spin free dynamics. <clears throat> so what is known is that this guy, this um, parameter should be traceless to give uh, proper uh, propagations of uh, uh, higher spin degrees of freedom. So, uh, so, oh, so like that. this is from start what is called is a front style formulations. So in this, like, I didn't, I was not careful enough to give all the <laughs> references. So, the, so please uh, forgive me about that point. So this is a front style mechanism, front style formulations. So if so, if you are curious about references and uh, something you want to know more about what I'm saying, just uh, please do not hesitate to to contact me. Then I will provide you the relevance, the, uh, reference and also details, further details. So in, the, in this case, scaling equation will, be, will look like u1, u2, this part zero. And then in this case, so what uh, we get is that again, the solutions is, is uh, like this. Again, we take the, Mm, the Minkowski background, for instance, then u r say is given by first the constant piece, and then actually what we can do is we can do the free uh, the tail expansions of these guys in a sense, and then we write down all the tail coefficients in this way. And, and factorial but what what uh, so what this equation does uh, says about this Taylor coefficient is that it's precisely saying that uh, symmetrization of so this uh, thing with the one index uh, sorry Should be zero. This is a, this simply says this. Uh, so in this way, actually, this is nothing but uh, the Young diagram conditions. Young diagram. So in this way, we end up with just a two-row Young diagram. The first row is given by R. And then, so each time we increase this X, we have an additional number of boxes here N. And then uh, this uh, condition is that uh, simply it should be precisely of this uh, irreducible Young diagram, which is traceless actually now, because it is originally traceless. And then N cannot exceed R. Otherwise, uh, this condition tri would trivialize the, the relevant uh, tensors solutions. So in this way, what we see is that indeed, uh, we see is that some, some sort of a global symmetry associated with the spin S field, massively spin S field. <clears throat> uh, 
has uh, uh, some sort of global symmetry. So the, for the moment, we just we are just solving uh, killing equation. So we cannot say already that this there, there should be some there should exist some symmetry associated associated with this, but it will be the case later on. So it's uh, otherwise any, anyway the killing equations. Will be like that. Yeah. So what is more is that indeed uh, those killing the solutions of killing equation or if you like killing tensor should be actually you know, should generate certain global symmetry. So that is uh, actually uh, coming from again all the gauge invariance of the system. Gaze symmetry. Uh, actually, all the, the above gaze symmetry should be compatible clearly with the interactions. So that, that's why I was just writing like that. And then this requirement, uh, if we just decode uh, this requirement, in fact, uh, cubic interactions and also quartic interactions if you like gauge consistency of uh, these guys I, I I will say that gauge consistency of these guys. Uh, will give, in fact, killing tensor should uh, should generate a global symmetry. Uh, global symmetry. More more precisely, actually, what we get is indeed uh, just the killing tensors. Those uh, are uh, associated with certain uh, symmetry, which has uh, indeed a league group uh, uh, symmetry, because it's uh, anyway an, any symmetry is uh, with the continuous parameter is a league group, so we can uh, see this. So this is a complete generality. Actually, this is not related to higher spin. You you can have any kind of symmetry, gauge symmetry in your system. Then you can always uh, just uh, try to solve a global part of it. Then you can just identify from the uh, from the gauge symmetry of the action. You see that uh, the the killing part should uh, be okay also a symmetry of your actions, and then there should uh, be a certain uh, Lie algebra associated algebra uh, generated generated by those uh, killing tensors. So in this way, uh, uh, we we get we see that uh, in, uh, if we have uh, higher spin uh, fields in our theory. Our, the symmetry that we have in our theory should extend in a way that its generators contains uh, this kind of uh, object. On top of, for instance, on top of the uh, isometry that uh, uh, P and M, say if you do this around the Minkowski background, uh, isometry and also some internal symmetry, if we have uh, a massless field, then we should have uh, another generator which extends the bond gray into higher spin group uh, symmetry. But uh, actually it's a bit more subtle than that. So we would like to have uh, also general covariance. So I have a small question. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, so if you just go a bit higher up, just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, so in the case of in this uh, generalized, uh, well, the higher indexed spin structure when you have in your theory. So basically, uh, our Lie algebra would be constructed out of these generators, this m mu1 to mu r, then m right. mu1 mu, mu r nu1 to nu n, etc. Yes. So, so the, 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 that is the full set of generators that we have in our theory. Uh, right, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Thank yeah, you. yeah. So in the in the usual case, this was the simple example. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah. So and that then, that under tree, that extends to this higher higher spin. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Precisely, in, uh, you see that the, uh, when this part uh, becomes zero, and then lambda becomes essentially constant, then you see that a is transforming. In this case, a, a is transforming how, how to say linearly. Right. So, yeah. So in this way, you see more or less how global symmetry uh, somehow replaces the gauge part. Right. 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 Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and then actually, this requirement alone is uh, uh, actually not uh, somehow. Uh, so this this is a, it's a mathematical consistency, and there might be some solutions of this, but some, some somehow we would not be happy with all possible solutions of this. Some, some symmetry compatible with the isometry and also compatible with all these tensors. Because in this way, uh, what uh, we learned, physics learned, in the, um, the expert in this area learned is that uh, if we do this, it's very possible that uh, you lose the general covariance in the sense of uh, different morphism. Because like, uh, so there is some sort of gauge, sort of hierarchy. So uh, spin two is uh, some, some spin one part, uh, as well as all the other part is gazed, all, all the other lower spin part is uh, gazed by the high, highest spin, which is spin two in the usual theory. And then again, spin one gazes all the lower spin guys spin one, spin zero, spin one half, but not spin two. So there is this kind of some sort of a hierarchy. And if, so this is quite a huge uh, natural in the uh, in Minkowski background case, if you don't have cosmological constant. And if you try to uh, construct higher spin uh, theory uh, within this setting, then somehow you have the same problem. So you have, you add a spin three or spin four, then this guy is not gazed under spin two. Then it, it's, I mean, this that guy does not transform under different morphism. So this is something that we don't like because we still want to have uh, some Riemannian geometry. So in this way, actually, uh, somehow people, uh, Vasiliev and Fradikin uh, uh, in the past, uh, somehow discovered that by adding cosmological constant, we can somehow tweak a bit. Uh, deform this uh, com some sort of hierarchy, and then e eventually we can also make all higher spin fields gazed by different morphism uh, spin two. So this we was some some something that we needed. So so killing tensors. So this should be gazed, but on, under global transformation means that uh, all the killing tensor should uh, transform properly under isometry. So more formal, formally, we would like that the killing tensor does transform, I mean, nicely in the sense that they should carry representations of the isometry group. Yeah. So this is uh, the requirement. And then this requirement for simplicity, we can uh, to understand this requirement. It's it's easy to go already to the simplicity. Let's go to ADS or DS case because it actually there are quite many subtlety around the mm, flat background uh, with respect to Poincaré symmetry. Uh, and then people know that uh, actually ADS will have uh, a less problem. And then also uh, in, in this lecture, when we say about all this group and uh, quasi and orbit, blah, 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 uh, uh, ADS, ADS is uh, easier uh, because uh, their isometric group is uh, simple. While Poincaré is not simple, so that becomes, in a sense, already quite different thing, and then uh, things become more subtle. So in this case, what we get is that the spin S field had uh, all this symmetry, 
So it, it, this guy has, uh, in this case, we have SO2, D minus one symmetry, and then SO or SO, maybe let's write group deep index, uh, SOD, right? So then uh, in this case, so this was all the Lorentz tensors before. So those are all uh, SO one comma D minus one. But uh, those can be uh, uh, packed into one single guys under uh, this isometric group. Because this is nothing but branching rule. So let's call this maybe, uh, yeah, let, let, let us take just the ADS case. Huh? But uh, many things can be just, uh, I think all, everything that uh, I'm, I will talk today will just work same in ADS situations. So we have these guys. So in the end, what we have is that, uh, to summarize, what we have is that, uh, if a theory, so in the end, uh, so if a theory, here theory means the higher spin theory, contains uh, gaze fields like this. And then some, we, we can allow even some multiplicity. And then there are, this is a sort of our spectrum, uh, call it uh, maybe I. I is our, maybe S, yeah. is it a spectrum? So in case of uh, massless uh, higher spin gravity uh, constructed by Vasiliev is that uh, uh, S is, uh, is from uh, one to infinity, excluding zero, which is, uh, just uh, no non gauge symmetric field and no no multiplicity i is just only one label for each spin but then but but more general <laughs> we can consider these situations what uh, we can consider this situation <laughs> then there should exist a global symmetry So it's a Lie algebra. Uh, say G, just spend by <clears throat> I is uh, the additional label. Yeah, so we should have this global symmetry. And this we will call as a higher spin uh, algebra. So this was a very clever um, thing to notice first, uh, noticed by uh, Vasiliev and Fradikin. Uh, before people were trying to just construct the theory and then they faced various problem, but they, they, they somehow understood that, okay, indeed, uh, Actually, I think I think historically they wanted to just uh, construct like we do in the supergravity and many other uh, cases where we can use the gauge structures. But retrospectively, it's, it was very clever because uh, anyway, so this is minimum requirement. There will not be any higher spin gravity without any higher spin algebra. So if there is any any theory which is consistent, we know that there should exist higher spin algebra. So then uh, we can first try to construct higher spin algebra for algebra, which is much, way uh, more simple thing than uh, constructing the theory. Uh, so in this way, we can, I mean, we can divide the task. First construct higher spin algebra, and then try to construct the, the higher spin gravity theory um, uh, associated with this higher spin algebra. So now let's, I will not uh, go 
deep into the constructions of theory using a higher spin algebra. Uh, so, but I will just go to uh, say more about this higher spin algebra. So in 4D, which was the, uh, the first case that uh, uh, was considered in the literature by Vasiliev and Fratkin and Vasiliev, uh, what, we, what they used was actually already this SO2,3, which is an ADS isometric group, is actually isomorphic to this. I will write in, now in terms of just algebra notations. Otherwise, uh, I need to put all this uh, double cover, whatever, octochronos, blah, blah. But the algebra is algebra, the algebra, this is correct. <clears throat> And then there, what we know is that these tensors, which is uh, nothing but given by, so I will do anything in the kind of uh, the uh, space time like index, even though it's not fully space time because it was, uh, if you like SO2 comma three, a vector index and M and N, while the other index that I will introduce now is A and B. So this is this kind of tensor. But this is, we know that uh, now SP2 uh, friendly, SP4 friendly notations, it's just uh, two R. So this is uh, so two comma three and SP four R. And in this case, it's just, uh, uh, now I use uh, for a SP index, I will use A, and this is just uh, just a symmetric tensor. Okay. But uh, what is more uh, often that we divide this A index into uh, two A takes four value, but we can we often divide into two group alpha and uh, beta dot, so one two and the one dot and two dot, and then we uh, often uh, describe this as a T alpha one, alpha m, and then beta dot, beta dot n. We do uh, sometimes like that. Yeah. And then uh, this kind of thing can be done also in other dimensions in 3D. Because in the literature, uh, I'm just introducing this because in the literature, what is, what is more known is uh, um, uh, using some sort of spinner or if you like twister like index and, and the spinner index, not in, not in the vector form. So, so two comma two, we all know that uh, this is just uh, SL to R plus SL to R, two copies. If you like left and right. Uh, and then, uh, so this uh, true Young diagram, RR, is now in this case, it's just to, to uh, left and then uh, right, yeah, like that. Again, this is a SO2, comma two, and this is a Sertoir uh, representation. Maybe one more thing about 5D. Uh, so to comma four. So this is SU two comma two. So in this way again here, we have RR. In this case, we know that actually finite dimensional representations of SU. So anyways, you 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 see that all these uh, uh, finite dimensional representations, and these are all uh, you you should not care that much about unitarity because uh, what we are considering is non-compact and then while we are uh, considering uh, finite dimension representations. This is not very odd, right? Because uh, we know that uh, uh, all these uh, isometry generators, which is a joint representation, which is just uh, uh, non-unitary because in the finite dimension, there is no unitary finite dimension representation. So as you uh, two comma two, the finite dimension representation can be described in this uh, strange uh, uh, Young diagram. Uh, so, uh, 
in 3D, what is this L? Oh. Uh, left and right, just uh, uh, 2L, the number of box of the. Ah, uh, sorry, 2R. 2R, right? Uh, yeah, sorry. 2R. <clears throat> yeah, so it's like this. Or sometimes we uh, draw this way. Anyway, so this is the diagram. And then, so this is that in terms of tensor, we have actually AR, P1, PR, and then it's traceless. Traceless tensors. <clears throat> so those are the <coughs> thing we have. And then now let us go a bit uh, uh, deeper into 4D case that Vasily have considered. Probably now <clears throat> you start to see something <laughs> you didn't see uh, before if you haven't uh, looked the higher spin literatures. But uh, I mean, don't worry, it's uh, not a difficult thing. But may maybe slightly unfamiliar, but not difficult. This is simple. So in 4D, you see that this is uh, all the tensors are given by symmetric um, things. And then there is no trace conditions, actually. In general, SP, finite dimensional representation of SP is, should be trace list Young diagram, but trace is with, uh, with respect to uh, this uh, anti-symmetric tensor. So since this is symmetric guys, so it's a fully um, there is no, no, no issues about the uh, trace. So that's why it's uh, sim much simpler to consider these guys than this. Also in this case, these guys are not uh, subject to, to any trace. In 5D, we do have trace condition, which is a bit different, but uh, in three and four dimension, there is no trace condition, which is, even though this is a very simple <laughs> mathematical thing, I mean, but in reality, it's, uh, I mean, it saves a lot of, uh, problems. So this is uh, just a traceless uh, symmetric tensor. Um, without any, any trace condition. Yeah, that's quite uh, important. So then we, there is a two way to handle these guys. So, so suppose that now we know that. So I want to construct certain algebra out of it. So what the, the task is, our task is, we know that uh, uh, our uh, higher spin algebra should be gener generated by this kind of uh, tensors. And we need to cook up some Lie bracket, which is uh, all fine. And especially this Lie bracket, should reproduce isometric group, isometric algebra when it's just um, restricted to the um, uh, this isometric part. And then the other part is all the covariance. So we just uh, need to require this general covariance, so general covariance, et cetera, et cetera. Let's put, uh, find a good, Bracket. Yeah. <clears throat> so what we can do, what, what, uh, so in the literature, Fradkin and Vasilev, I think they, they tried, they first found this high spin algebra by brute force uh, computations. But then uh, people, then Vasilev realized that there is a more elegant and uh, nice way to do the, to get to describe the same algebra, which is uh, based on these observations. So this is quite well known trick. Whenever you see uh, anything completely symmetric, symmetric tensor, you can associate it with uh, some polynomial of the vectors like that.
There are several different ways to justify this. One is that maybe you can do the generating functions of this, and then it's uh, all those things, uh, symmetric guys will be generated by this symmetric uh, stuff, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, so so we can make sure that, okay, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence we can identify like that. Suppose that there is no multiplicity, then you can identify, you can make one-to-one -one correspondence between these, these tensors and just uh, uh, functions of y, which is just y is just vector in this uh, SP uh, index. So maybe more mathematically, we can make some sort of uh, homomorphism out of uh, some pol polynomial functions of uh, uh, y, some certain variable y. Rho is uh, the image of this map rho is a uh, real, the generator of real algebra. <clears throat> then the Lie bracket is nothing but this rho. And then if rho is actually uh, with the row, in a sense, we can in, induce Lie bracket on the space of functions of A, a Y, if you like. Yeah. So this is a Lie bracket on the uh, space of a function. In y. Yeah. So rho is now just a uh, uh, Lie algebra isomorphism. So now what is what the task becomes that I have functions of y and another functions of y. I need to uh, uh, identify some Lie bracket, some sort of uh, I mean the some sort of bracket, some sort of uh, anti-symmetric product between these two functions, which is satisfies Jacobi. Yeah. And then here, another thing, one thing is that the, the isometric part which is, which is nothing but quadratic, okay? Is a, so SP4R is simply spanned by this y a y b, this quadratic part. And then we this would be the first hint to identify this Lie bracket. And it turns out that it turns out very simple Poisson bracket. Because y inherently have uh, anti-symmetric tensor, because uh, uh, this is a symplectic sp4r has a symplectic two form for y for symplectic matrix. So we, we, using that, we can define a uh, Poisson uh, bracket. So y a y b simply that. Uh, Symplectic matrix of SP four. So this would just work. This uh, this would just work. So naively Poisson bracket would be already okay, but it turned out that there are some subtlety. There is some subtlety. And then indeed actually with this, these conditions, which is uh, uh, which makes the uh, isometric part already good uh, SP4R element, there is a two way to extend these guys into the any functions of Y. Yeah. So now we know that this, but when we now need to, uh, we need to, Define 
any functions of y. But then there is two different possibility. This, which has same property like that. The first one is just Poisson. And second is what is called the Moyal. Poisson is just Fy, A, Fg, Y, B, Omega, AB. Uh, will be the Poisson bracket. Or the second one is that uh, there will be a sine, sine function of it, actually, sine. Sine hyperbolic or sine, it, depending on the conventions that you may have. But it turned out that the Poisson is not good. Poisson is not good uh, in the, it, it, it can never be somehow compatible with the, the actual uh, higher spin theory. We cannot get any higher spin theory out of it. Even though higher spin algebra it seems to be okay, but uh, it will be ruled out when you try to construct higher spin theory out of it. That's uh, another ingredient which is uh, relatively subtle, uh, which is uh, uh, cubic interactions dictates uh, actually in this way all Poisson brackets. Uh, and then it, 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 those should be compatible somehow. But uh, we can check that uh, uh, certain higher spin algebra can be constructed just mathematically. But the, the structural constant uh, used, in, used in this higher spin algebra can never be realized in terms of uh, uh, higher spin interactions in the higher spin, some Lagrangians. So in this way, so this is not good. So no, no compatible higher spin theory. which is not that hard actually. You can just look, write down all possible gauge compatible cubic interactions, and then try to see whether those will have, uh, will be consistent with the, the uh, Lie bracket that you get. And then this is the, what is, what is uh, this is a spinner. So this was the first construction, first answer. And then second thing is uh, the following. Second observations. So the, anyway, the observation is that, okay, this is all symmetric. Second observation is that, uh, wait, so this guy is, uh, somehow a two e to r can be in a naive way but later we can justify this is some sort of product of uh, isometric generator some sort of product of isometric gener generator. But then you, you may immediately object that, okay, no, in this way, in, in general, this will be never uh, fully symmetric. So then, uh, so, okay, then what's going on? Let's see, note. So MAB is a symmetric guys. So suppose that I have two guys, two guys, T A T A B C D. If I want to write down TAB, MCD, is it fully symmetric? To check it, what we can do is that, okay, tensor product of these two guys, right? Because one thing is this and the other thing is that, okay, this will be that. But then indeed there is a fully symmetric guy, but uh, there will be also uh, all the other guy. So this is coming from one single 
uh, guys, but the, in terms of trace, we get the others. And then uh, there is yet another diagram but that, but that, that will be automatically disappear because, uh, uh, because of the platism. We have uh, the same M here. So anyway, we see that, okay, no, there is a problem because we do have this. Uh, but then we can impose uh, in a way that, no, maybe we can impose the condition that which kills this. Yeah, so this equals zero condition will be good. So in terms of the expressions, so there will be this. So this is, uh, this two part is nothing but the trace of the original disguise. So any anti-symmetrizations will be, if any anti-symmetrization is zero, then actually this part will be just gone. Yeah. So this is the conditions. So then it turned out that uh, indeed then it works somehow. So you do, you write down your generator as if it's some sort of multiples of your uh, isometric generators, but together with these additional conditions, then again, the Lee brackets, that's all in a sense can be done uh, in a relatively simple manner. But what so what should I understand? How should I understand these conditions actually? So there are several ways, several different ways. But one way is actually it's a quasi orbit. So it turns out uh, that this is uh, the what is uh, these conditions. This condition is uh, this uh, what it, what describes uh, minimal minimal nilpotent uh, quasi orbit. Over SP four, it's too long. And, and then uh, it turned out that, what is why it is then? It turned out this y is actual coordinates of this quasi orbit. So let's try to understand that part. For that, I need to introduce the notions of quasi orbit. Now. So we be begin with the assembly group G and then the algebra associated the algebra. So the algebra will be generated by a certain set of generator, call it TA. And then certain element will be given by, I mean, this in terms of this generator like that. And then we, we assume there is a structural constant ABC like that. Yeah. Then what we what you can do is that you can we can consider dual. So that's why quad joint, dual core space, dual space, G star. So this is nothing but uh, spanned by dual basis, which I call like this, and then which whose element is uh, again related by this way, expanded by this coefficient TA. So any element in this vector space, will I will uh, use the notation phi. And this dual basis is uh, simply uh, given by this uh, dual vector, delta E, this bracket. Then uh, what you know is that a joint action of group element 
uh, the joint actions of uh, certain uh, Lie algebra element is just given by G X G inverse. And then qua joint action. So qua joint, so it will be put a star and then we have, should act on phi. That can be defined through this, uh, this uh, things. So for any any x, we should be phi and a joint actions. Yeah, so it's uh, defined in this way. So anyway, so we, we can uh, define uh, this way. So originally we have uh, um, certain vector space, which is dual of G star, I mean G. So it's G star is vector simple flat, if you like just flat vector space. And then we have a phi, a, a vector in it, a vector in it. And then you we act with a group then it this can move around, right? Because we, it's, uh, the group is uh, continuous and then we can just move around. And then it will form a surface. So this is uh, what is, what is uh, known as, this is quasi orbit. Orbit phi, generated by phi. So this uh, quasi orbit, Orbit is nothing but, uh, so it's uh, orbit of phi is uh, something which is obtained by or phi yeah, mm, with the g or the, for all any element of, uh, how, how we should write this? Yeah, just maybe like that. Anyway. And then we, we understand actually this is same as g and then stabilizer of phi because uh, now from here i want to act move around and then indeed uh, there will be stabilizer which do, which do not transform these guys and all the other points are uniquely associated uh, to element in this coset so in this way uh, we can understand okay it's quasi orbit is like that an example uh, in the definition of the quasi orbit there are g inverse uh, in the above here, I think the, there is the inverse. Indeed. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I will check all these uh, details. I, I prepared the lecture without much <laughs> time of preparation. So I, many things are is just out of my memory. So I might be wrong on <laughs> some details. <clears throat> Yeah, I think it's like that. Um, so one way to see it actually is uh, uh, so and it's uh, just a strongish question is uh, in case of uh, simple group, uh, we can identify phi, uh, g and g star with, with the killing form. Then actually, uh, the, this uh, phi can be understood as just a trace by x, and adjoint action quadrant action is the same. Then you see that the phi uh, G, G inverse X is a trace is same as trace uh, by G inverse XG in a trivial way. So I think this way we can see that it works like that. <clears throat> so now let's consider a simple example of SO1, comma 2, which is uh, mm, spanned by three generator, J0, J1, and J2. And then SO one comma two star. So this is called in space. Is uh, some phi is, can be again uh, identified. It's now dual basis. Like that. And then the space. Now we, we can put in even specific phi zero, phi one, and phi two like that. And then uh, we can, I mean, with, without much uh, difficulty, probably you can easily guess that uh, the orbit will have uh, this form. There will be some cone like guys here. There will be some 
One sheet hyperboloid. There will be two sheet hyperboloid. Etc. Etc. So indeed, the con the 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 orbit will be described by uh, some phi will be described by uh, phi uh, such that uh, uh, phi zero square minus phi one square minus phi two square equals some constant. Like so that can be, so this is given by some algebraic variety in this way. Yeah. So here, maybe I should put the quote unquote, or maybe more precisely, uh, this closure. Uh, semi simple or it's okay, but uh, in the case of uh, minimal uh, orbit, uh, so we need to take the closure. So, okay, good. And then a uh, uh, few uh, additional things. Let me see. Maybe I will go a bit over time and then, it, would it be okay? Yeah, no problem. And uh, by the way, what do you mean by minimal here? Did you define some minimal somewhere? Sorry, uh, here the minimal, so that's, uh, so this is uh, some notion that uh, probably I will not discuss, have, have much time to discuss. Uh, I will come, it, uh, yeah, so just soon I, I will comment on it, but I will not probably. Okay, so SO1, comma 2, so minimal, the concept of minimal is not so important for now. Here, no, here is not important. Here, there is nothing. Here, uh, yeah, I will comment on it later. So, um, yeah, okay, maybe, maybe I will comment now. So typically, in this way, we can slice a core zone space into many, many core zone orbits. And then there are, you see that there are infinitely many core zone orbits, which is kind of all, all possible sort of onions uh, that, that shoot in, in, in these uh, foliations. And then there are two distinct guys. Here, there is a cone-like guys and then just hyperboloid-like guys. So, so more generally, what we, we can distinguish two type of orbit, one is called the near potent and the other is semi-simple. Semi-simple. So precise definition is again, whether uh, the, 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 the element, representative element is a near potent matrix or uh, just other. Uh, other other things, but uh, intuitively we can see just whether there is this is cone like or uh, hyperboloid like. And another thing is that uh, a semi simple orbit is like uh, this hyperboloid. There are a continuum infinite and um, continuum of it. But the near potent orbits are always there are finite number of them. And then when you fix certain Lie algebra G, then there are only finite number of uh, near potent orbit. And in case of uh, SO one comma two, that is unique. Uh, and then uh, by minimal, we usually uh, we we uh, point the thing, take the minimal orbits, uh, the near potent orbit of the smallest dimensions. So yeah, what is not clear in this picture, in this example, was that actually they so different orbit may have different dimensions. Yeah, different dimension. Something has dimension two, something dimension four, something dimension six. All the time, even dimensions. But the, so it can have different dimensions. But in this case, everything is two dimensional except for the origin, which is trivial, the zero dimension. <clears throat> yeah. So this is the thing. Uh, yeah. But in the in the case of sp four r, so it is minimal because uh, there is yet another uh, orbit uh, like that. Mm. Okay, 
So, uh, okay, so, so what we, we know that so there are a few properties that I can mention about the quasion orbit. So first, quad joint orbit is a, a symplectic, is a symplectic space. Symplectic space. So we can define on a point phi, we can define a symplectic tube form where the vector x actually turned out that uh, um, so any vector on this orbit, any vector if you like, in, maybe in this picture, any any orbit in this uh, vector field will be clearly associated with the g actions. I mean the Lie algebra, because it's infinitesimal part. So any Lie algebra element gives a vector here. Of course, some uh, the Lie algebra associated with the stabilizer is trivial, but the, all the other will be uh, non-trivial. And in, in this way, so uh, the joint is more add in the sense of the linear directions. This will be a vector field. I mean, when X is not on the stabilizer, phi. But anyway, there will be enough uh, number of X which form a basis of uh, the tangent space on phi. So then, uh, then anyway, if you take two guys this way, then we, this will be simply obtained by this way. So more specifically, we can take A, B, C, X, A, X, A, X, C, Y, B, sorry. So it's a symplectic space. So, so in this way, it's clear that it is two, it's even dimensional all the time. Uh, and then uh, symplectic structures on it. And we know that any symplectic space is Poisson, but actually a uh, uh, whole co-azoin space itself is Poisson in the sense that uh, it there is a natural Poisson bracket that we can use. Phi, G phi, in fact, here in fact, entire. G star is Poisson. <clears throat> A, B, G, and H. <clears throat> like that. <clears throat> So, so now, now <clears throat> let's go back to the, the, the previous case. Mm. So, so SO one comma two, we know that the, the, this example, this one is a SP2R. So in particular, M12 uh, in the usual SP2R uh, conventions, which is a symmetric uh, two component uh, uh, matrix. So there is M2, M11, and M22, the SP2R basis, which is uh, J3, and this is nothing but J0 plus J1, and J0 minus J1. So there might be some error with all these factors, sorry, <laughs> if there is any, but I think the sense is, uh, Solid. So then uh, the, the thing that uh, describes this orbit, so this is radius. When C equals zero, we have uh, we are on the orbit. Uh, we, we are on the cone. So this is nothing but actually uh, phi one one in the sense of the dual of M M one one phi two two minus phi one two phi uh, one, two, which is nothing but phi one, one, two, two. So this is zero, this describes actually cylinder, uh, the, the cone. cone. 
So 0.10th orbit of the So indeed, you see that uh, you probably uh, realize these guys. And on top of that, what we know is that uh, if it's uh, symmet uh, phi is symmetric, so any other combinations is all zero. So indeed, uh, what we see is that, okay, phi A, B, phi C, D equals zero. So this is a, uh, in the case of sp2r, this equation is nothing but this one, which precisely describe uh, this, this orbit. And this equation is uh, precisely what uh, 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 we have seen in, in this uh, here. So in that sense, actually, uh, it's a minimally important orbits. So in this case of sp2r, so there is a unique uh, nilpotent orbit, which is, uh, which is indeed uh, minimal. And it happens to have a, a satisfied same equations. But for any sp2n r, uh, we, uh, there is an orbit which is satisfied this equation. And that's the minimal orbit. Yeah. Good. And then now let's see that how uh, we can relate, uh, I mean, how, how, how we can solve? I mean, we want to see that uh, parameterize this. Uh, uh, we want to, for, for instance, see the dimensions of these orbits uh, in any dimension, say, in any uh, sp2nr. So how we can uh, do that? So for that, we can do uh, the following trick is that uh, phi ab phi cd uh, equal phi ac phi bd, right? According to these equations. And then, then we divide each side, a, b, phi, um, uh, what, b, d, no, a, c. So, so I did put this and then put that. So then uh, I get phi, um, d, uh, d, b, because phi is symmetric, phi, uh, d, c. Symmetry. So indeed, uh, so there is no summation error, but uh, you see that A is replaced by D and then we can put any number here. So indeed, this is independent of this index A or D. So this is simply of uh, something given by B and C. So in this way, what we know is that, okay, phi AB can be given by C, B, C and phi A, C. Why, where there is no summations, and then, by the way, we can take for any C here. So I can take B1 by A1. And then this I can call uh, YA for the moment. So I have now a B, and then I can call it even this uh, ZB. Now I, I have good parameterizations. But we know that phi is symmetric. Tells that the ZB should be proportional to YB, but eventually we can set to the same guys by absorbing some, some things. So eventually what we see is that, okay, phi AB is given by YA, YB. And then, so Y can take two N value. In SP4R case, it's a take four value. So it's four dimensional orbit. And in case of SP2R, it's two dimensional orbit. So indeed, you see that this is precisely the oscillator that uh, the, the, the variable that we, the Fradikin and Vasilev have used. Uh, okay, maybe the last comment and then I will conclude. So now let's, so just to conclude, we go back to come back to the higher spin algebra. Higher spin algebra. Indeed, now we see that the, the, the vector space of higher spin algebra can be understood is a space of a functions of 
or functions on the on minimal quasi orbit of sp uh, 4r and then this uh, minimal orbit of uh, sp 4r is uh, clearly some algebraic variety actually closure is algebraic variety Uh, with the condition phi, so it's it does to, to recapitulate, it's like that. Phi, A, B, C, D equals zero. And then we can take the coordinate system, system phi, A, B, is Y, A, Y, B. And then here we want need to note that this is not really good coordinate system. This coordinate system is up to projectivity conditions. Y A should be same as minus Y with these conditions. This is also quite important later, but I, I don't know whether I ever had time, but uh, it's important. So we do have this property. So this is, uh, so indeed higher spin algebra is nothing but actually functions on this orbit, more precisely, polynomial functions on this orbit. Uh, and then, uh, interestingly, this extends the minimal, uh, the relevance of, uh, of uh, uh, minimal orbit, OM. Uh, extends to other dimension. So it, it turned out that in any any higher spin algebra in any dimensions, the higher spin algebra so far obtained is nothing but uh, uh, can be obtained out of uh, minimal nilpotent orbits of uh, uh, associated isometric algebra. So the algebra is uh, the vector space of algebra is uh, uh, polynomial functions of vector this vector space uh, the, this quasion orbit and then we need to identify the product uh, on it. So this is uh, some bracket on it. Typically, we can uh, get even try to get associative product instead of just a Lie Lie bracket. And then we, what we can have is uh, there is Poisson. Bracket, which is built in because of these uh, structures, uh, symplectic structures, or if you like symplectic. But what we can do more is that we can try to make it associative using, using uh, star product. This is Fy star. GY, which is st starting from Y, GY, and then Poisson bracket. So this pro program is the, what is called the, is deformation contagion. So when you have uh, uh, data of Poisson bracket, then whether you can extend the, uh, the, the, the Poisson algebra of your, the, the Poisson algebra and the space of functions endowed with the Poisson bracket. So whether we can, you can uh, get associative algebra, which has this property. This is precisely the definitions of the program of Poisson deformation quantizations. And then, Actually, it turned out that the, the the result, the resulting star product, is precisely what is used in the higher spin algebra. Moyer bracket. The Moyer is the, the thing. The answer for sp four R is just Moyer on y space, y space.
maybe, yeah, maybe I will conclude. Yeah, today, today that that's it. Thank you very much, very pedagogical and uh, clear lecture. Uh, yeah, is there any uh, question? Uh, I have a question on the yes. this uh, uh, orbit. So you using the nil potent and the, it's uh, highly used in the higher spin. Mm -hmm. But uh, what about the other orbit, semi simple orbit? Is there does it give us some other new physics uh, other than higher spin? Maybe it's not massless higher spin, but some. <coughs> what did you saw that is semi simple? um not so clear so far i see yeah, not so clear so even even uh something uh other nilpotent orbit relevance of other nilpotent orbit in higher spin uh, physics business is not that clear uh -huh. so so there are variations of this high spin algebra what is called this partially massless high spin algebras mm -hmm. so those are some extensions so in principle, there should be something to do with uh, some other orbits. But uh, still, even that part too is not super clear. I, I tried to clarify that point, that, but I, I, I haven't done it yet in a clear manner. And then about, about the semi-simple part, it's not uh, that clear. But uh, my, my guess is that it, it should be something to do with, uh, um, in some cases, it should be something to do with uh, is uh, one parameter deformation like HS lambda. You mean the, this semi simple is related to this HS lambda or I mean yeah. Yeah. HS lambda? But that's, a, that's my own guess. Uh, is it within the, it could be also within the, this uh, nil potent or? So it's uh, the, the standard thing is like that. Uh, so it, it is known that. Uh, if uh, uh, the Poisson, the this orbit is a sort of regular, mm -hmm. then uh, this uh, deformation quantization program is unique mm -hmm. up to some sort of trivial stuff. So whenever you have Poisson structure, mm -hmm. you, you give Poisson structure, then uh, the, the kind of the star product algebra that you can get is unique. Uh -huh. but, but sometimes it's not unique when you have some sort of singularity. Uh -huh. So because of this, uh, you see that there is a, in case of minimal important orbit, there is this minus skies. Yes. It's not just, uh, uh, so in case of a 4D case, it's not just a two plane, it's two dimensional. So it's just why is it one, why one, why two? Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's a four dimensional, sorry. Four dimensional, it's not just a four dimensional flat space, but just a four the like this. So it's conic cone, four dimensional cone, if you like. So in this way, there is a, this singularity in the origin. Because of this singularity, uh, uh, there might be some uh, issues. Indeed, so not, but in, in this case, we don't have uh, the deformations, but in, the, in some other uh, cases, uh, so th this was uh, studied in mass, math, in mass. So in the case of SU, uh, the, the special linear type group, if you go to the minimal orbits, then the singularity that minimal orbit has, uh, has some uh, room for these deformations. So to, to, to conclude that, the, so even in the to starting from one, uh, the same minimal orbit, the contagion itself sometimes is not unique. Sometimes it's not unique. And especially when you have uh, some SR, SR group, uh, then you may have uh, some one parameter uh, family of the, this uh, hard, uh, star product algebra. So in this, uh, in, indeed the uh, HS lambda, which is related to SL2, you have one parameter family lambda. And then, but you can take any, any SL, it is uh, the same. But uh, my guess is that still that is uh, eventually same as uh, maybe beginning, uh, beginning with uh, some orbit, which is uh, 
right next to this uh, some semi simple orbit right next to this this minimal orbit but um, that's my guess I, I don't know whether it's really true okay uh, uh yeah thank you and uh is there any other question so tomorrow i will talk more about this um, particles maybe i hope that <laughs> the people who lost today's lectures may have uh, still <laughs> possibility to uh, to 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 enjoy <laughs> more in the tomorrow's lecture. So. All right. Then, if there is no question, then let's thank the uh, speaker again. Okay, thank and you. Uh, tomorrow we will have the second lecture uh, at uh, ten in the morning. So see you tomorrow. Okay. See you.